Hey, welcome back to Dogtography. If you're taking photos of dogs for social media in any way and you really want to up level your storytelling in your imagery, today's episode is for you. If you want more eyes to last longer on your pictures, more likes, shares, and follows, today's tips are really going to dig deep into the storytelling elements of your photos and how to up level them. Just take them up a notch from where you already are. This episode is part three of a three part series on how to up level your dog photography with my three um, biggest like tips from my professional career as a dog photographer. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, you're gonna wanna stay tuned. Hi, I'm Andrea Fleury and welcome to Dogtography. My channel is all about how to take better images of your dog and how to create some really super fun memories. I walk you through different tips and tutorials and techniques. I sometimes show you behind the scenes of my professional career as a dog photographer, all while just trying to have some fun and enjoy time with our dogs. Tip number one is to get your dog to interact in some way with their environment. No matter where you are, whether you're at home, at the beach, at the park, um, out for a walk, on a hike, something like that, you wanna look at where you are and see how you can get your dog to somehow interact with your surroundings. It could be putting them up on a log, running through the water, digging in the sand, uh, jumping at leaves. Something that lends to the story that combines your environment and your dog. So it's telling a story. There is a picture, there's, there's action or movement or a nice portrait happening where they're in a nice location up on top of something. Those things generally really lend well to people wanting to look more at the image. It makes it, it's all about up leveling from just that random snapshot that you know everyone's out there taking to an intentional, mindful image. And really, it just takes some practice to be like, okay, I think I'm gonna take a picture of my dog here. What am I gonna look for in order to kind of somehow get them to interact? I'm gonna show you a few examples. So here we have Freya the cat. So we went specifically to shoot these cherry blossoms. Now they're beautiful blossoms, but the cat is like a fraction of the height of the tree, right? So we get to the park, beautiful blossoms, but the cat on the ground, you're like, okay, how am I gonna get these blossoms in the shot? Because the cat is so small in comparison to this giant tree. So I was like, well, Let's put her up in the tree. So it's natural for a cat to be up in a tree. It also boosted her head, like her eyes, her face, everything that you're wanting to focus on and look at of your pet, up with all the flowers. So they're surrounding her. She looks like she's submersed within this tree, which is, uh, I think, the most stunning part of it. She, you can just see her green glowing eyes coming out from this tree. And I think it really lends well to this concept of like interacting with your environment. It's a portrait. She's not like, you know, batting at the leaves or anything like that. So she's not interacting with it in that way, but she's still like part of it because she's like submerged in the image. Let's check out another one. Here's one of my favorite pictures of Asher. Um, this is a classic dog on a log. So here I am at the beach, it's the winter time. And I specifically sought out this beach because it's called the Driftwood Beach. There is wood and like fallen trees and branches and everything everywhere you go. So I was looking around trying to find like the best cool looking roots. So there was that like texture and the color and all the detail that I wanted to be able to see within the picture. And um, he is up on top of it. So that just kind of, that's how he's engaged with the environment is by being perched up on top of this log. Let's look at another one. So here's Asher in a hammock. People look at this picture and they always kind of laugh and giggle. They're like, did your dog really like lay like that in a hammock? Yes, yes he did. And <laughs> Did I have to make him? No, no I did not. I don't believe in doing that. But he was able to hop in this hammock and there he is chilling, like he's chilling. He was having a great time and he looks fantastic. So again, he's just interacting with the props that were on this property. Um, and instead of like taking a picture of him in front of it or beside it, I was like, why don't we just try getting him in it? Here's another example. We have Macy with the sunflowers. Now again, she is like 
surrounded by these beautiful sunflowers. They're all around her. So she's right on the edge of like this big uh, plot of sunflowers, but there's maybe like one or two or three kind of in front of her. So it's giving the image a little bit of foreground and a little bit of context. Notice here as well that the sunflowers are coming up higher than her head. Again, making her feel like she's kind of down in them. I didn't want bright white sky at the top, so I purposely shot this so that the green was coming all the way up the back. Um, and I think it just lends to the story of a fun photo shoot in the sunflowers. And so lastly here, um, we have Taiga in the, in the winter, in the snowy winter. God, it's just so beautiful in the winter to take photos. So again, you're just looking around for like, I find like you'll notice a, a, a trend here. Getting animals up onto something really helps with the photography. I find, especially with dogs, if you perch them up on a surface, they are more likely to, to stay put or to stay put longer. Doesn't mean they won't jump down eventually, um, but it kind of just like, especially if they don't have a stay, like a rock solid stay, I find that putting them up on something really helps them kind of want to stay put um, so they're not jumping down while you're still setting up the frame of your shot. And Taiga here is the same thing. He was perched up upon the, I don't know, this was some like weird tree stump or something. And, um, yeah, it just like really works and you can tell that he's kind of immersed in this wintry, snowy scene. All right, so tip number two is to show some kind of relationship or connection in the image with the subject. So the subject's always gonna be your dog because that's what we're talking about is dog photography. But what kind of relationships do they have that you can highlight in your photos? Is it the relationship they have with you or one of their other humans in their life? Is it a relationship they have with other family members or with another fur sibling, whether it's another dog or a cat or something like that, or another really great subject um, for social media photography that I think uh, lends really well is uh, dogs and their like children siblings. So with kids, um, I've always got lots of likes and shares with uh, that type of imagery. So I'm gonna show you some examples. So in this example here, we have Tyler and Dudley. And the relationship and the connection is, yes, their relationship with each other, um, but also you see that he's holding a treat in his hand. This dog is obsessed with food and obsessed with coming to daddy to get treats. So that held a special meaning in this photo. I remember when I showed it to my client, he was like, oh yeah, that's totally us. And when a client says that to me, I know that I've captured that connection because it's something that they do that they don't often get to see, right? Because we're in the moment, you don't get always get to see that. So this is a great example of doing that. Now you can take this as a selfie on your own. And if you wanna learn more tips and tricks about how to take your own selfies, go and check out my video, which we'll link above, um, of my DIY selfie photo shoot. So you can go and see all how to do that. But that's one example, let's look at another. So here we have Dash and he's interacting with his environment, but he is also interacting with the relationship he has with his ball. So he is a ball obsessed dog. And this image just highlights how crazy he is about this ball, willing to like throw himself up in the air and contort his body into different positions, just in anticipation of catching that ball. Um, so this is an example of using like a toy or something that your dog is like really passionate about. Next we have Finn and Fergie. So they are siblings and they're adorable in the sunflowers together. This is more of like a portrait, uh, but it was really lovely to have the opportunity to get the two like siblings together in an image. Now this type of imagery is also really popular with, uh, with dog owners that have more than one dog. So it's, it's tricky to get, which I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't suggest trying to do this on your own if your dogs aren't used to kind of being this close together. If you have a helper, you're more than likely able to capture something similar to this or something like this. So we have Danny and Indy running around on the beach with like their favorite beach toy, sharing it, of course, very well, might I add. And uh, it just shows their relationship. Again, their um, owner, Carol, she said to me like, oh my gosh, they do this all the time in my backyard. So it was just something again that they always do that was really nice to capture their relationship together.
Now here we have Megan and Lucy hanging out in a garden. This is um, just another example of more of like a portrait style that you can get that, that has like a serene feel to it. You can feel, I can feel their love for each other. And I think that it's just like a beautiful environment kind of submerged again within the garden that they were in. Now here's Asher and I. So our relationship is a fun one. And uh, this was one of my favorite images from last year's uh, holiday shoot where we're doing the little mistletoe kiss. So having fun using some humor. Uh, my trick for this, by the way, if you're wanting to recreate your own is you just put a little peanut butter on your cheek and well, the dog does the rest of the work. You got to hold up the mistletoe though. Now with children, having fun with this, I love this image of Colleen and Jazz the dog. Um, she looks so regal here and the expression on her face kills me inside. It's just so funny. I love, I love, I love kids interacting with their furry siblings. Here we have another one, another, um, mom and dog shot. Um, this is at sunset. This is actually one of my award-winning images. I called this Sophie's last sunset. Uh, we took this image uh, right before she had her eyes removed. So the storytelling behind this image is like, it's there, it has an impact. Um, it's, it's really lovely, but it's an example of interacting with the environment, being in the water and the water kind of jumping up and you can see it glowing through her fur and everything, but also the smiles that they seem to both have on their faces and that they're facing each other and interacting with each other. So there you go, there's tip number two, showing some relationships and connections. Tip number three is about tricks. So teaching your dog to do different tricks or commands or whatever you wanna call them. So the more that you can kinda of train your dog and have them interact uh, with their environment or with you, or with other people, or just to do fun things in their photos, the more enjoyment it adds to people that are looking at it. So Asher has been trained for quite a few, but there's still quite a few on my list that I wanted to share with you that he doesn't know how to do. Um, but we have what's called, um, I taught, and now I'm not a dog trainer. I need to like put that right out there. So what I call our tricks could be known as many other things out there in the big wide world of dog training and dog sports. But we do what's called fronts, which he puts his two front feet up on something. So you can see here with this pumpkin shot that we took at a local greenhouse, I ask him to do a front and I show him by just pointing at what I want him to put his feet on and he does that. This I was able to teach him when he was a puppy. Like it was really easy to be able to teach him to put his feet up on things. He uh, naturally was confident with it, but also when he was a puppy, I socialized him to different surfaces and getting up on things and the instability of things. Like these pumpkins, I remember were like trying to roll all over the place. He didn't really care so much. So he found his own balance and he found his way. But the fronts, like putting his feet up on stuff, I've used many, many times in my images. And again, it allows him to interact with the environment, which is what he's doing here. So in this next image, I asked Asher to do a fronts here, but he kind of like throws his own spin on things sometimes, which I absolutely love. It's what makes it feels collaborative. It's like the only time him and I, cause we can't talk to each other. So I ask him to do something and he kind of modifies it where he's comfortable, which is what happened here with these pumpkins. Now he looks like he's resting his head on them. I do recall asking him to like do a fronts on these, but he just kind of laid down eventually and just got comfy and I thought it was just like stinking adorable. So that brings me to my next trick that we do. Um, I call it a flat. Um, I've heard other people call it a rest, so like a chin rest. So being able to rest his chin either on an object, which he's doing here on the side of a chair, or like on the ground or on something else. I'll show you another example of his um, flat, I call it. So here's an example of his flat, like on the ground. So not only is he just in a down, like in a lie down position, he's also in a flat, which is chin resting down on the ground or down on his leg or whatever he, he usually chooses and I just go with it. 
So teaching your dog to do a down, which is like a lie down, whatever you want to call it, is a really good option to have. Um, especially when it comes to, again, interacting with your environment. So this property had this really dope swing and I was like, wow, it'd be really cool if my dog would be able to get on the swing. Now, again, he is used to getting up onto unstable surfaces. I didn't have to help him up on here. He was able to jump on here, but to get him to be comfortable enough to lay down on it, um, I thought that that was a really, a really great way to take this picture. Um, but it doesn't have to be up on things like this. So starting your dog just lying down by cue, like on the floor, and then you can kind of work up towards like other surfaces, logs, tables, things like that. Now this is our like party trick. This is our high five. Um, I bust this out when I'm trying to take a funny photo, which isn't often actually. I don't take a lot of like humorous looking photos, but this is our connection. This is us having a great time. We're interacting with each other. We're facing each other. Uh, he looks like he's having fun. I know I am, I got a smile on my face. Um, so we always break out the high fives and it just feel good. It just feels good all around. I definitely recommend this one. It's a great party trick as well. Tree catching. So tree catching is something you can do. I actually haven't photographed Asher's tree catch before, but I did this fun one with Dash and you can see it's a composition here. So I've edited all these frames together, but Tree catching is a really fun thing that you can take pictures of. It's really fun as well to throw your dog a treat and have them catch it, you know, to reward them for being in a pose for a while. So I think that that's a super fun one as well. Um, so that brings me to my list of tricks that are on the to-do list that I thought I'd share with you. Cueing your dog into a stand is a very valuable trick, if you want to call it that, or a cue. We kind of do the opposite. So we train our dogs to sit. So we hand them food and they know to put their bum on the ground. But what if you want to take a picture of your dog standing up? I can't tell you how many times I have struggled with this with a client's dog saying like, okay, can we just get them in a stand? Can we get them in a stand? Then you get the food out to reward them for holding it and they just put their bum on the ground. It's counterintuitive to what we've taught them so many times. So Asher does have a stand. It isn't rock solid, so it's still on my like to-do list. Uh, but it's, not, it's worth mentioning to you so you can think about that. Okay, a hug. Uh, a hug is what I've seen other dogs do when they like wrap their paws around like a tree or um, another dog. I've seen other dogs like wrap their arms around the neck of like another dog. Uh, I think that's really dope. I don't know how to train that. I've seen it done, but I haven't yet tried to tackle that one. So I can't even speak of it, but it's just like super, super cute to see. Um, this one, okay, so this is one we're working on right now is a hold. So teaching your dog to hold something in their mouth. I have a future vision of what I want Asher to hold in his mouth, but it could be anything from like a flower, a leaf, a blanket. I've seen people put like a blanket around their dog in the winter and they have them like hold the blanket in their mouth. Um, it could be um, a fun prop, something cute, whatever. But look it up, YouTube it, Asher Dog Trainer. How do I teach a hold that is also like a grip? So it's a duration thing and to make sure they don't shred it and like, uh, you know, make like thinking it's a toy, which is the stage I'm at with Asher right now. And then that brings me to a wave. So teaching your dog to wave or to put their paw up in the air, it's like a hi. It's just super cute and pretty funny as well. So that's kind of my trick list. Um, I think we've covered everything on that list. Yes, we have. So if you have any other tricks that you like to teach your dog or you like to have them do in your images, I'd love to know what they are. Drop them down in the comments below. So there you have it. Those are my top three tips on how to enhance the storytelling components of your images. Here's your assignment. I want you to go out and put these into practice. Just have them sitting in your mind. If you're taking photos for your dog's social media or your business or whatever you're doing, if you're a dog walker, groomer, all that kind of stuff, just put these in the back of your mind and pull them out when you're ready to take a picture. So try not to take any more mindless snapshots. Now that you've finished this three-part series, you should have lots of information in your mind about different things that you can try when you pull that camera out. A mindful, like a mindfully taken photo is 
always going to be way better and more enjoyable to look at for your viewer than a random careless snapshot. Okay, so I want you to go out, take your pictures, post them and tag me at dogtography.ca so I can see it, share it, like it. And um, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I'm really, really excited. And if you haven't seen the previous two episodes to this, you don't wanna miss them because the three of these uh, episodes really link together and it's what's gonna up level your dog photos to like the next level. I can't wait to see what you guys create until next week. Have fun and make memories with your dog. I'll see you then. Bye for now.